what's the mandate of DFO? Well, bottom line is that we manage a resource. And that means, uh, first off, that managing resource means understanding what you're trying to protect. But it also means providing sustainable opportunities for people that ha would like to have an interest in harvesting that resource. So the wild salmon policy, you know, is very clear, I think, on uh, laying out a, a strategy for what the what one is going to protect for the salmon. It lays out how you would measure that, and it also lays out how you would plan for it. And then it became um, two things. One is, what are, you, what are you trying to protect? What does it mean when you say conservation? And what does it mean when you talk about allocation? Once you've taken care of conservation and you know what you're conserving, what does it mean for people that are going to harvest fish? One is the, the planning process, which is getting all these different stakeholders together and First Nations together. So that's really critical to us. Um, we spend a lot of time on our consultation process, setting up advisory processes to bring all those parties together. What's really unique about the wild salmon policy is that the federal government, it's already established that conservation of salmon is their priority objective uh, over everything else that they're supposed to do. What the wild salmon policy does is it defines conservation, what that means for the federal government. So it really is that clear next step that the federal government needed to take to demonstrate what it means to conserve. Now the last step is applying it. The core of the wild salmon policy is conserving the diversity of salmon at a level that's appropriate that allows their long-term persistence and survival. That's the core element. Everything else is about supporting that and making that happen from ecosystem integration, habitat protection, and developing recovery plans for these conservation units, which is the unit of diversity that the wild salmon policy demands we protect. The key strategy of the wild salmon policy is to integrate the ecosystem concept into management. So considering not just a single species at a time, but considering how uh, that species interacts with its environment from habitat to, to other species that it may feed on or that may feed upon it. And integrating some of that information uh, is key to getting management right for salmon. One of the big challenges we have is understanding what happens to salmon as they go out into the open ocean. Don't have a lot of information on that. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans went through this long process of consultation, came up with a consensus statement of, of what the priorities are for the future of, of salmon. That is pretty darn good in my view. I, when I first read that policy I thought, oh, you know, this is, they're making all the right sounds in my view and, and I think the objectives are really very advanced and I, I give them a lot of credit for the effort in, in articulating these, uh, these goals for, the, for what we want for the fish. The wild salmon policy is, a, is a, a, a very good policy of the federal government that pledges to protect biodiversity of wild salmon and uh, it's really important to do that because this diversity is what's going to allow them to adapt to future impacts like climate change. But there's also been wonderful demonstrations of collaboration and a willingness to work on these issues. I think the wild salmon policy itself is something that uh, has gained the support of, of at least the fishing industry and that's quite encouraging. It has opened up doors and opportunities for us to work with them and uh, we'll continue to pursue those opportunities. Planning will allow you to not just set a rigid plan, but it's important to be able to adapt to change. And so rather than being very prescriptive about what is going to be a fishery, for example, focusing just on a, a fishery and when that fishery would open and close, it's much more important to be uh, prescriptive about what those rules are and what those decision points are. So that you aren't just you know, aren't saying, well, we'll have a fishery in July and it'll close in August. It's if the fish return, these are how you'll harvest the fish. If they don't return, this is why you will not be fishing overall rules of thumb that you can put into play when certain triggers happen uh, without necessarily fully understanding what caused the triggers, without necessarily being able to predict uh, that they're even going to happen. These forecasts have inherent uncertainty. It, it's pointless to make that criticism in my view because the scientists all know how much uncertainty there is and there will always be that uncertainty. What we can do instead is simply rely on much better information for what happens when the fish are actually returning to the coast just before the fishery happens. So don't bother trying to look a year in advance. Say, how many fish are coming now? What are the rules? You have the rules all in place, which they are, and you say, right, this, this, and this have happened, that triggers that response. In other words, open the fishery, open it here for this long, for that species. Get all those rules in place and then improve them every year as you learn more from about how well they operate in, in an uncertain world. But I, I think it's uh, quite a forward-looking document and uh, it has a lot going for it, but 
there's always that little caveat that we really now need to see it put into action and see what effect it has. Of course, it's not good enough simply to look good on paper. The, the proof is still, I think, ahead of us. It's, it's essentially being able to report the information on the, the runs, the volume of, of each particular run, you know, from DFO to the fishing fleet as quickly as possible. I mean, the runs, they change so, so quickly. And uh, communicating that information to the fishing vessel and being able to move the fishermen off and on the water as quickly as possible to, uh, to maximize the, uh, the catching of the, the healthy stocks and moving them off the water as quickly as possible to let the weaker stocks, you know, repopulate and swim by.